Hey guys, uh, it's Tiffany and I'm here at Fancy Farm Winery and Vineyard today. And there are a lot of people in the group that have been asking questions about how do I live a healthy lifestyle and still include uh, some alcohol in there, wine um, on the weekends. And uh, so I thought maybe I could come over here to my friends, uh, Robbie and Tom, and they could tell me some stuff about winemaking and what would be some good choices and versus some not so good choices. So anyway, we are going to uh, pop on in here and uh, see what they have to say. All right, everybody, this is Tom Kurtzinger. Uh, say hi, Tom. Tom. Hi, Tom. <laughs> and uh, he is the owner of a Fancy Farm Vineyard and Winery. And so he is going to tell us a little bit today more about winemaking and how we're going to incorporate some healthy choices uh, when we're trying to live a healthy lifestyle, but we still want to have some alcohol or wine incorporated in there. So, uh, so Tom, we have some questions for you. First, you know, when we go to uh, drink wine, a lot of times they're labeled as either dry or sweet wine. And so, um, you know, we don't really know exactly what the difference is and how we choose. So can, tell us a little bit about what's the difference. Okay. So wine is going to be divided into three categories actually there's going to be a dry there's going to be a semi-sweet or semi-dry and then there's going to be sweet so there's three categories uh, and it's based on manufacturers or like myself put it based on the amount of sugar that's left in it so anything over two percent sugar is going to be sweet and anything under one percent sugar is going to be dry and then so semi-sweet falls in the category in between so people that like it kind of sweet, like a Riesling perhaps, people like, some people like Riesling. It's got a residual sugar, it's got a little leftover in it. Uh, it's a semi-sweet, a Cabernet, a Merlot, they're gonna be a dry wine. And then if you go into like a Moscato or any of your fruit wines, they're gonna be sweet. So it's just based on the amount of sugar that's in it and how much sugar you want to have in your drink. So do the ones that are labeled sweet, are they gonna have added sugar in those um, when you make them? Yes. When we do harvest grapes, for instance, and of course, sweet ones are also fruit, other fruits besides grapes. When we harvest grapes, they got a 24% sugar in the grape itself. They're that sweet. Uh, table grapes, for instance, are 11%. So these wine grapes are very sweet, but the yeast converts all the sugar into alcohol whenever during the process of fermentation. So we could ferment this down to where there's very little to no sugar left in it at all. Uh, all wine is, for the most part, most all wine is fermented to dry and then sugar is added back to it if you need to sweeten the wine. Okay, awesome. All right, so we have lots of people that still want to enjoy um, a couple drinks a night, uh, but how much is too much? So uh, everybody always says enjoy in moderation. Uh, so tell us, Tom, what is moderation considered? Uh, moderation is going to be based on, first of all, if you're male or female, of course, they're, they figure that the stature of a male is a little more so it can withstand a little more alcohol. So is there a certain, um, there's a, is there a certain serving size that would actually be considered, you could actually measure? Most of the time when you start talking to people about what's allowable, uh, they start talking uh, in terms of either glasses or ounces. So most of the research that I've seen says that women could have one glass and men two glasses of wine a day and it would be okay. <laughs> How about like the time of day you drink it? Does it matter or can you drink it at bed? Or can you do, when, when do you, does it, does it really matter? Uh, yes, you know, there's been a lot of research on this too. Uh, one of the things that, and you, you'll notice this a lot over in Europe, when you watch these folks in Europe that drink wine all the time, they drink it with a meal or right before a meal. You get the most benefits out of the alcohol uh, with, in conjunction with food. Uh, you almost metabolize alcohol at that point and it doesn't go into your system as an alcohol. It's actually a digestive aid maybe. Um, you know, so, so one of the things we like to do is drink at that. If you're gonna drink it right before bed, and you have to keep in mind that alcohol is an addictive substance, what happens is you soon get to the point where you have to have this drink to go to sleep and you don't wanna get to the point where you're dependent on it that way. Uh, with the meal, 
it's fine. Uh, it, its addictive qualities are nil, nil nearly. So you know, that, that would be my choice for timing. Okay, so drinking with a meal would probably be a better choice than probably drinking at bedtime. If right. you're gonna, for a health perspective. Right, from a health perspective. Okay, perfect. All right, Tom, um, can you show us what about four to six ounces of wine actually looks like when you pour it into a glass? Okay, so our glasses are eight ounce glasses. Uh, if you pull them full to the rim, they'll be eight ounces. So if we're gonna pour a four ounce glass, it's gonna be about there. And then a six ounce glass is about about right there. So that's, when we pour you a glass here, we're gonna do about a six ounce pour is about what we're gonna do. Okay, great. And so the, um, you know, as far as other health benefits, I know we were talking a little bit about digestion when we were in the back room, um, but is there anything else that wine does for you? Well, you know, a lot of people are using it now. They're, they're finding out that and it's only with the red grape that you're gonna get this maximum level of antioxidants from wine. So the antioxidants in your system, they help with things like your heart, your blood, your, your uh, cholesterol, and actually lower your cholesterol with moderate use. Uh, now for the people that like white wine, <clears throat> you also get some of these benefits with white, it's just not at the same level you will with a red grape. So the red grapes and the, and the white grapes, they still have, both have the benefit, but just reds have a lot more. Okay, perfect. But some benefits in white too. So if you're just not a red fan, then you're not getting completely left out, correct? Correct. It's still, you're still getting, it's still a grape, it still has those properties, just not at the same level, red to white. All right, perfect. Okay, so we've talked about the health benefits of red wine and we talked about the health benefits of dry wine. So what happens if you just really don't like red dry wine? So I am not a fan. I am definitely more of the white sweet wine kind of girl. Um, so what do we, what do you do if this is just not your thing? So uh, we're gonna talk to Robbie um, and kind of get her um, idea of, she's kind of helping me try to get into more where I can drink a little bit more of the red and dry uh, wine, just because I think it's better for the health benefits. So let's see what she suggests. All right, guys, this is Robbie and hi, Robbie. And uh, okay, Robbie, I need help because I'm trying to reduce sugar in my diet and, but I do not love dry wine. So, um, so help me, what can I do to try to make myself drink dry wine when I just not, I'm not in love? Well, a lot of people say that and they like that sugary flavor. It's just like sweet tea. So what we try to do, and we did for Tiffany last night, was you try to wean yourself off that sugar and what we did for her was try to do a half and half mixture of, let's say this is a ruby red, uh, and we do a companion of our sweet wine, which is the old red barn, and we're gonna do half and half so they don't get all that sugar, uh, and she really liked it. So her second glass I did, I even gave her more of the dry wine and less of the sweet, and she was accustomed to that taste. So if you can cut back that way, cut it with a little sweet, or even maybe put a little packet of sugar in your drier wine, that will help also. Yes, and actually, uh, once I kind of got my first glass, it took a little getting used to, but uh, honestly, at, like Robbie said, that second glass, uh, my taste buds were kind of used to it, and I kind of got to where I thought, okay, I can keep doing this, so. So, and eventually you will go to, I had another girl do the same exact thing uh, here in the community, and she's drinking the Ruby Red, which is the dry version. Still has a little sugar in it, but not near as much as this one over here, which everyone loves, but it's got a lot of sugar. All right, so Tom, get in there. And uh, thanks guys from the Fancy Farm uh, Vineyard and Winery for all your expertise today. And come out and see these guys here in Fancy Farm, Kentucky. All right, thank thanks. you, Tiffany. Well, thanks for hanging with me today, guys. Hopefully you learned something about wine and how you can incorporate it into a healthy lifestyle. If you have questions, just drop them below in the comments and we will try to get our local wine experts to answer any of your questions. So y'all have a great day. Bye.